Hello and welcome to Retro Cars Reborn. I am Lee, and yes, I did have a heart attack, so I should probably not slap myself in the chest. Well, you join me from my absolutely gorgeous interior. Yes, it's standard, apart from this steering wheel and this horrible gear knob. But yeah, this is the MX-5. And today we're going to be installing a short shifter. First things first, tools that you are going to need for this job. Not necessary, pair of pliers. I've got them in case I just decide to drop something. You will need a Phillips or crosshead screwdriver. I've got a little assortment. You will definitely need a 10 mil and a ratchet. You will not need a head cam strap. Stuff you're going to need to remove. One gear knob. One centre console. Mm, yeah, centre console. Uh, centre console is pretty easy to remove. You have one screw here. You have another screw on the other side. You have one underneath your ashtray if you've still got it i have um done away with mine because i plan on putting a cup holder in there and then the other one is indeed inside your cup hole and i say other one i mean other two one and two so let us remove those right now so these three screws here are easy to remove it's these two here they're a little bit more difficult. This is where a uh, magnetic screwdriver would come in really great. Because as you can see, look, when the two come out, oh, that one, that one came out really well. Oh, I managed to get those two out really well. And it just happened to just get just get caught in the end there. But normally they're a bit of a pain to remove those two. There you go. All your screws. Put them somewhere safe. You're gonna need them. Now my gear knob isn't screwed on. So I can just pull it off. It's one of those crappy screw on types with the allen keys on each side to hold it on but it was never any good and the reason I had to use that was all of my threads on here were butchered from when one of those was fitted incorrectly so all your screws are out of your centre console literally just lift the front up get it clear of the uh, shaft of the gear knob and you're just going to lift it from the back, lift it from the front, helps if the gear, gear, helps if the handbrake's up a little, and release it from the back lock, and there you go. You can then literally just turn it over, make sure you've got an empty centre console. Press this little bit here, look. Pull it out. Same with this. And there you go. One. Free centre console. Put it out of the car, put it in the car. You know, as long as it's out of the way, you're all good. Now, I've not been driving this car for very long, a couple months now since it's been back on the road, and I was noticing that the centre console and all this area next to my leg and everywhere down here was getting really, really warm, and I was getting pretty concerned. I was thinking, what is going off here? 
So a little bit of digging on some forums. Turns out, if you remove all this sound deadening material, the cause of it is this boot here. Put it to one side. This boot's completely gone locked. There's just nothing left of it. And basically what happens is all the heat from the gearbox and all the heat from the exhaust rises up through this hole and literally turns this center console into a fire pit. It's ridiculous next to your legs. So if you're getting those symptoms, it's this rubber boot is gone. Now I've already ordered one from MX-5 parts in the UK and it became a genuine Mazda one, 20 quid genuine Mazda one, look at that great, so I'm going to be swapping that out at the same time so you've got your sand editing material out of the way now you can see this boot if it's in this state already I don't see any point in removing it to get to the job you want to do but I'm going to change it so I'm going to take it off literally 4 10 mils Put them to one side again, nice and safe. And this awful thing should come straight out. I mean, look at the condition it's in. Really bad. See, normally you have to cut this little nylon bit to get it off here, but this is in such bad condition it just falls straight out. And yeah, look, you can see the ground through there, so no wonder all the heat and everything comes through. And literally, I can feel the wind and breeze coming through there now. It's pretty nice, actually. So there we go. Now you're down to the actual gear shifter. I mean, as a standard shifter, it's a gorgeous shift. But uh, I've got a short shifter in my Mark II Escort and it's gorgeous sand. You just get that nice satisfaction of it clicking in. It's well nice. So I want that feeling in this car as well because the MX-5 is such a nice car to drive anyway. I think this will just make it that little bit better. So on with the next step. So we're on to uh, 10 mil time again. One, two and a third. Just need to get yourself a little tub like this. This is a rice tub, you know, a bit of Tupperware, something like that. Something you're not really bothered about because all these parts from now on are going to be absolutely filthy and you don't really need all of them. So you're going to want to put them somewhere that's not on your interior. You may even want a rag to uh, clean up some of these messy bits. So you just gotta take these three nuts out. shifter itself look and you can see it's gonna have plenty of grease and oil coming off it well you hope anyway you don't want to be pulling that out and it be completely dry that would be a bad thing and there you go you just want to deposit the bit straight into the little tub there you go you get no mess anywhere it's great 
again you can change this turret oil it is separate from the actual gearbox oil you just want to suck it out with anything little syringe something like that and then refill it if you're going to refill it it's 80w90 mineral oil i believe so we're at that stage now where you are ready to pretty much put the kit in so let's have a look at the kit so here's the box that the kit came in it came from gravity performance it is an ebay kit it's also i believe made in the uk it was 39 pound 99 so no not really expensive at all and for that you're going to be at, you're going to be there thinking well you know this is this kit's not going to be amazing it's 40 quid now i've seen a load of videos before shooting this one and before fitting mine of course you go through the process of seeing how it's fitted you know seeing how they're good i've watched people fit ebay ones i've watched people fit 200 300 pound ones i can't see any difference in the quality or the quality in the manufacturer and the, and the the parts that they've used to create the for this one's 40 quid to a 200 pound one i just can't see any difference in them at all all the kits are the same they might come with little tiny different little bits but at the end of the day i believe they are all the same the only thing i've noticed is people fitting them incorrectly and then complaining oh it's an ebay part i've had to do this to it i've had to shim it i've had to cut bits out of it well if you fit it correctly you don't have to do any of that so i'm not too sure what's going off there but yeah in the box you get your short shifter you got all your different spacing bits your longer bolts there's your spacers to bring the throw up new nylon washer it's pretty much the same as you get in every other kit So yeah, Gravity Performance, I'll leave a link in the description of where I got it from, anybody else who wants to buy it, 40 quid, I'll do a review on how well it is as soon as I can drive again, not too long now, about two weeks, I need to do a review on how the Mazda performs in the first place, but yeah, all right, let's move on to fitting. So on with the fitting, the first bit of the kit you're going to need is this turret spacer, your little spring washer. And you can see inside here, there's this little nylon bush. You want to pull that out. Oh, just like that. I'll just drop that in the box. And this is why you wanted to wrap right, and some uh, kitchen towel later. You see how easy that nylon bush came out? I've seen people hammering this piece out and all sorts of stuff. It's just not needed. So, your turret spacer. Boom. Drops in nice and perfect. See, I'm calling this a spring washer because it's sprung loaded. Drop it in. Boom. Now, this is the original nylon washer that you've taken out. Nylon washer, bush. You want to refit this. People show you putting the new bit in. It doesn't go in yet. It's got to go in this piece. It does have these little cutouts in it for this to sit see look sits perfecto just want to drop it in you want to make sure that this little cutout here is now opposite this one just like that nice and opposite perfection because this piece this new cutout slot drops into it 
and it's all perfectly lined up just like that so yeah you want to get to look like that and you are ready for the next step yep so once you've got it to line up you just want to get your short shifter drop it in a place like so so it literally slots into that little bit and it all lines up and you're looking at the last pieces of the kit here now your nice nylon bush you can see it's got this little groove in so you want to face that down so it fits round and it literally just slots in look just like that holds it all in place followed by the top cover again slide it round These are a lot longer, so they just slide perfectly in, look. And they come with anti-vibration washers as well. I don't see the point in the anti-vibration washers. Anti-vibration washer spacer washer I mean you're not going to get much vibration through that I wouldn't have thought but you know they're there for a reason so we shall fit them fit one of these short shift kits correctly I've seen a lot of people putting this slot to the front like I say butchering the kit to try and get it to fit there's there's just no reason to do any of that and now it should be as smooth as anything oh listen to that Proper, proper fast and furiousness. Look at how solid it is. Literally, hardly any movement in it at all. Oh, gorgeous! I would only do these three nuts up to about 10 newton meters max and then literally everything fits back as a reversal so we shall do that right now so i'm just going to nip these up for now i can always come back and talk them up later and tight A nice easy modification gives you that better driving experience <clears throat> there we go oh it feels already amazing so now I get a crack open this bit It 
it is nice to be fitting a, a genuine Mazda part again. Again, you don't, you're never going to see this, but it is worth the replace. Oh, I've seen people saying about these about how difficult they are to actually get back on. Just need a little smear of lube on there to get that back over. This is why people cut it to take it off. And also this undoes on command. I don't know why they made it like this, but I think, I think a little bit of uh, thread lock in there would help the situation yeah it's going to be quite tight to try and get that over especially with it undoing itself so yeah a bit of thread lock on that I think would uh, would solve that I haven't got the, oh, the power in my wrists to do anything so yeah a bit of lube on that and it should slide straight over Right, and we've got the lube. Not a sentence you're going to be shouting often. Now, you could use some WD-40 or whatever on there, but it's going to run down, get into here and all that. And oil and rubber do not go well together. So, literally, little, again, piece of Tupperware. Dab a washing up liquid in it, look. That's all you need. Put a little bit round here. We'll smear some. Right in the opening. There, look. I'll have a go again. And getting it over. Oh, look at that lot. Washing up liquid for the win. The only thing I have seen on the more expensive kits is there's a little rubber piece on here for this to sit on but because this is undoable I'm guessing that's why they did it because you can undo it it uh, doesn't infringe on uh, you having to cut it every single time you want to take it off Yeah, so you get to the point you just want to get your four ten mils back in. Starting to look like a car already. Yeah, get some things out of the way that we don't need. Definitely don't be needing that no more. All right, one centre console. Kind of a waste of the time those now because I don't have an ashtray. I'm just gotta make sure all this wire in here is tucked up out of the way. And we'll feed it onto the back first. Again, handbrake up. Feed it onto the back first. I should allow the front to drop down. Make sure your wiring's not caught underneath. Just need to feed it around this corner. Make sure it's tucked up. 
Now you've noticed I've not put any of the sand deadening back. I'm not going to put the sand deadening back because it doesn't seem to help me in any way. And I've made an error. I need to remove this. This little nut is for my new shift knob. Just to help centre it. And I thought if I left it on it, it'd save me some time. Clearly it has become a hindrance. Got wiring, do your thing. There we go. Comes nice and flat again. All my sand deadening materials, pretty much dead. It's not in the best of conditions. And again, just wanna put your screws back in. Two in the front. One in the centre. Normally, like I say, there's an ashtray here. You gotta lift out if your car's totally standard, like this one was. And then two in the back. Say a magnetic screwdriver definitely helps in this situation. Come on, there we go. And of course, a step that everyone will have missed. You can put all your crap back in there now. There we go, look. Slide that back on. All right, this was a nice little eBay purchase. Gorgeous. Here's the perfect thread pitch as well. Come on. It's nice and weighted too. Look at that. Gorgeous, lovely finish. I want to do away with all this chrome, you see. I want to do it in a little bit of black. We shall see in the future, but there you go. Nice and easy. Nice little way of making your MX-5 feel a little bit more racy, a little bit more sporty. There we go. So there you have it. One quick shift, sounding great, feeling great. So if you enjoyed the uh, video today, leave us a like, subscribe, comment. What would you do? Do you think I fitted it wrong? I think that's a pretty good fit, that. Could you do it any faster? Of course you can. Filming and doing that ridiculously slow. Could have done that in 10 minutes if I hadn't had to film it for everybody else. But, you know, that's, that's how it goes. So, uh, yeah, leave a like, comment, subscribe. And, uh, you know, I'm going to have to take it a little bit easy 
but I'll find something a little bit and I'll find something easier to do for the next video for everybody else as well so uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you again